Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Mandalay BCD. We have Bad W Pad with Maxim Goncharov. Before we begin, I've got a few brief notes. Stop by the business hall located in Bayside A B. The Black Hat Arsenal is in the Palm Foyer on level three, and the Arsenal reception is at 1700. If you haven't had a chance to pick up merchandise, today is the last day. Visit the uh, Black Hat Swag and Bookstore. Visit the Cali Linux Lab in Mandalay Bay A. And thank you for putting your phone on vibrate. We appreciate it. Maxim? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Maxim Goncharov. I was working for Trend Micro for 15 years. Now I'm changing a bit uh, my direction and moved to uh, the Bay Area from Germany. I'm going to work in a small company called Shape Security. Today's talk about the WPAT protocol, which I think some of you know already. And I'm going to disclose you some interesting information, some experiments I've done uh, last year about that. Um, I think it's really good then um, we, you have a uh, free uh, lunch and it, for, for me it's also really good because you know you, have, you can uh, eat for free but when you have it during the presentation I think it's not so uh, good so people will still come in so that's why I will start now and people will join. Yeah. So the WPAT protocol came to the um, devices and to the software in 1996 when the Netscape Navigator 2.0 was released at that time. And at that time, this pro was quite advanced technology to uh, let people go to the internet in case of you join the corporate network. For example, when you bring your device in a corporate network and you don't want to really interact with the IT guys, or IT guys don't want to really interact with you, this protocol was really helping. So basically, you have your device connected to the internet, uh, to the network, the local network, and the local network gives you information about how you access the internet, what the proxy settings to use. And this is uh, all about that. Uh, WPAT um, protocol gives information about the network settings for the proxy in the two different ways, using the DHCP propagation and using the DNS. So DHCP is quite working quite simple. So basically when you receive the IP address, with additional request, uh, your operating system will receive the information about the placement of the wpad.dat file. Actually, it is a proxy.pack file, which uh, consists of the JavaScript. And this JavaScript gives the directions how to use a proxy, especially for the certain um, configuration of your system. Plus, when you access certain domain names, it also will give you directions how to do that. In case of we talk about the DNS, it's working a bit different. So in case of you open your settings, let's say on your um, Windows machine or on your iPhone, you can actually select uh, to get the proxy settings automatically from network or not. And the proxy settings received from the machine uh, inside the network, which is uh, named WPAT. And uh, the propagation of the information about this machine goes in different uh, protocols, for example, via NetBIOS or via the just DNS settings of your network. And it's quite interesting because when you receive the settings, actually your machine making the DNS request, first request go in like uh, that. So you have a, a top level DNS uh, prefix in your network plus some additional uh, levels of the network settings and your request going, for example, in case of I'm working for Termicro, and Termicro we have a top level DNS uh, suffix, uh, prefix called um, uh, trendnet.org. So in case of you making the request, you're making a request like wpad.trendnet.org. But in case of you're situated in a bigger network, for example, I'm living in Munich and the office is in the Bavaria. So we can request like wpad.munich.bavaria.trendnet.org. It works exactly in this way. But the problem with this protocol, that uh, protocol looking for the settings from up to down. So basically, in case of making request wpad.munich.bavaria.trendnet.org, the next level will be in case of the DNS is not resolved, will be like uh, wpad.bavaria.trendnet.org. Next step in case of the DNS not resolved, going even uh, lower and going like wpad.trendnet.org. On this stage, the DNS request should be stopped and your system should not looking for the DNS settings for the w, uh, uh, DNS record for wpad.trendnet.org uh, because this is just the top level. But in some cases, with some software, requests going even deeper and requests going like wpad.org, 
which is completely wrong, but it's still working in this way. So basically, in case of your own domain name, like uh, doublepad.org, or doublepad.com, depending on your network, or doublepad, whatever you can imagine, you can uh, get this request inside, uh, uh, outside of the local network, and you can get this request on the internet. So requests looking like that. So basically when the WPAT request via DNS working, so the first step is that your machine trying to resolve the name. If the name is resolved, then the IP address used from the, zone, uh, from, the, from the name resolvement will be used for the HTTP GET request. And this is just a screenshot how WPAT request looks like. So basically your machine requests in the file, like IP address slash WPAT.dat. And I made uh, several experiments around, the, um, uh, around this uh, problem. And the first experiment was that in case of a name my machine, like WPAT inside the network, basically I was expecting to get some kind of traffic for, on my machine. So basically you see my laptop over here. And uh, this laptop was renamed, uh, literally renamed to WPAT name. And I take my laptop uh, in different places and uh, see the traffic. Uh, this year, in January, I was visiting the conference in Bay Area called um, uh, Enigma, and uh, I decided just to make a test. So I came to the airport of Munich and switched on my uh, laptop connected to Wi-Fi network, and I've seen the traffic. I was a bit surprised because usually uh, the traffic need to be really encapsulated from the IP address to IP address, but it's not, in, not always. The next step was that I was flying for Trimicro really often, so I was able to visit the business launch of Trimicro. I came to the business launch. I connected to Wi Fi of the business launch, and I've seen the traffic as well. But this traffic was a bit different because people who sit in the business launch, they are really interesting people, maybe for the attack, right? So I was surprised, and I was really um, uh, trying to see how many uh, requests I have on my laptops. On my laptop, actually, I'm running the Apache server with just a simple local, uh, local rotation so I can see the activity over there. The next step was that I uh, board the Lufthansa flight Munich to San Francisco direct flight, and they have a Wi-Fi on board. For Wi-Fi, I have to pay. But uh, I didn't want to pay. I just didn't want to, I wanted to try how the exactly thing works on, the, on board. And believe me, it was exactly the same. So I connected to the Wi-Fi, even though I haven't paid for the internet, but I still was on the network. And I've seen the traffic right on board on the plane. And in case of I was a bad guy and I was trying to attack people, in this case, I can get the really sophisticated people who really sit in the business of first class, because usually pay pe people who fly in uh, business of first, they pay for the internet. Or maybe they get it in some coupons for free. Arriving to San Francisco, exactly the same way, exactly the same, same situation. So I was waiting for my luggage in the San Francisco airport. Sometimes it takes a really long time. So I decided to just try it, just for fun, in case if I can open my laptop, connect to the Wi-Fi, which is free in San Francisco airport for, I think, half an hour. And I've seen the traffic again. And of course, I joined the conference. Uh, on the conference, actually, it's, I don't really blame the conference, because they use uh, just uh, hotspots provided by the hotel where the conference was hosted. And of course, I also seen the traffic over there. This is uh, interesting, because uh, when we talk about security people and security conferences, uh, people need to be really careful when people connect to the open uh, Wi-Fi from the hotel. This Wi-Fi is not really uh, protected, and uh, I can see the traffic again. So basically, in case I would a bad guy, I can use it. Uh, and as a statistics, I just want to provide it you so I can see the traffic also. Because I was traveled a lot uh, afterwards, I've seen the traffic on the different conferences, I've seen the traffic when I was visiting the micro office, which actually was fixed immediately when I informed uh, the company I was working. But I, thi I think the problem still exists on different places, and I think it's uh, quite dangerous uh, from the, this point of view. The sec second uh, step of the experiment I did, so I decided to go and uh, trying to evaluate about the domain names I mentioned before. So I told you before, in case of you leak, in case of you own the right domain name, and this domain name is um, uh, accessible on the port 80, and if this domain name can provide some additional uh, file to the people who are requesting this file, so you can see the traffic. So basically I bought, initially it works in a way like I decided to buy the, just one domain name for fun, to see in case of it's working. It was like the beginning of uh, last year. I bought the domain name for fun because I believe that problem is fixed, and problem was fixed um, uh, by different big companies, and big companies was telling that they would patch that and everything's okay. So I just decided to buy the main name and go for test. Uh, the, I bought the main name like 12 o'clock a.m. Uh, Munich time, 
and uh, I spin up the AWS machine uh, micro instance just to receive the traffic. So I uh, put the IP address in the ADNS record of this domain name. The main name was a doublepad.to. And after about 25 minutes, I start receiving the traffic. So the first night when the domain was running, I received about 30,000 requests on my uh, domain name. This 30,000 requests was not really unique, so some of them was repeated. But I think I had seen like about four or 500 unique IP addresses where I received the traffic. Afterwards, I came to the um, management of Micro and suggested them to uh, buy a bit more domain names. They supported me, so I bought like about 15 domain names and start just receiving the traffic for analysis. So I just decided to collect as much traffic as possible to see from what um, user agents I received the traffic because I believed at the first step that traffic will be generated only by, by browsers, which is not really correct. And this is just a screenshot I received, uh, it, I think it's from a few months ago. And you see that uh, the main names uh, shown here, I also decided to go not only for usual TLDs, but also for new TLDs. And some of the traffic really interesting because you can see that uh, the unique IP address is quite, quite, quite low number, but the uh, hits uh, are quite high. So actually this uh, screenshot done from the software called AW Stats which is not really developed for such uh, analysis, but just to have it uh, as simple as possible, I decided to use software for that. And as soon as I'm a, a German citizen, I live in Germany, I decided, okay, uh, first of all, of course, I checked who owns WPAD.de as a domain name. And uh, the guy, uh, Carsten Kruger, this name doesn't tell me anything. Uh, but uh, the problem was that uh, the guy who owned the domain name, WPAD.de, was running the Apache server with the, conf the proxy configuration file uh, on the server side. So there was a WPAD that file, and WPAD that file was providing just direct connection to the internet. So basically, in the proxy settings, you're writing, in the proxy script, you're writing the settings that direct, direct, directly access the internet. That's it. But the problem is that you can modify this file on the fly. So in case of you come from one IP address, you show direct connection. In case you come from another the, uh, place, you can show maybe, maybe something different. So basically, you can target people with the attack by IP address. Of course, as a good uh, German citizen, I immediately inform police about that because I think it's not really good. Because I cannot really test, I cannot really confirm if it's dangerous or not. So police literally was involved in that, and as soon as I showed them presentation, what I'm showing to you now, they was really shocked. They're saying like, oh, so this, we need to do this something. So they uh, uh, literally was looking for the guy, so they sent the squad to uh, the address which mentioned at the, at the a, uh, domain name record. But basically, in Germany, in case you buy domain name, you have to provide your uh, personal information. You cannot buy DE domain name without providing this information. So uh, they uh, came to Berlin to find the guy. The, the address was wrong, but finally they found the guy somewhere in Köln. The guy was from CC Club, and at the beginning he was really um, declining all the things related to WPAT. But at the end of the day, the police was able to get the log files from him, and looks like he was not using it in a bad way. So that good. And I would, re I would like to really credit the Christian Porsche and uh, uh, Folke Peters on that because these two policemen was really um, active in this uh, research and I was really um, amazed that the German police was really able to help me with that. Oh, sorry for that. Um, when we're talking about the domain names, uh, of course I scanned all possible WPAD domain names uh, from different TLDs just to find out who owns the domain names. So some of the domain names like .com and .org, they're really blocked so nobody can use them. But some of the domain names own, owned by a really strange company, for example, a company called Weblock. This company, they, um, oh, it's a uh, small company. They provide the app which give people possibility to block the ads in case of you install this app on the iPhone, for example, iOS. And uh, they use exactly the same technology for WPAD propagation, so they provide customers with WPAD.dat file, and in this file they write the rules what the domain names ignore in case of uh, people trying to access them from the iOS, for example. Uh, but also I found out that this company owns a lot of domain names, which is really strange, like for example from Belgium, from Spain, from Greece, from Poland, from Czech Republic, Italy. And I was quite... Um, Surprised uh, because of that, and also company runs the 
Actually, they run also the server with the wpad.dat file with really tricky uh, regular expression things inside. So um, I'm still working on this file, but I was trying to contact this company. Nobody answered me. So in case of uh, somebody represents the company here, please contact me. I think it, we can talk about that. The problem is that this company also owns some domain names, which are really dangerous. I mean, and it's not possible to get such a domain names uh, nowadays uh, easily. For example, domain name like wpad.tw. TW, it's a Taiwan. You cannot buy a domain name from Taiwan if you're not a Taiwan citizen. You cannot buy a domain name from Taiwan if you are uh, like uh, com.taiwan in case of you are not a uh, business in Taiwan. But the people from Poland and this company was able to buy these domain names and use it somehow. Or from China, you see these domain names. It's really strange. And uh, there's Thomas Kapersky, the guy who owns this uh, app and owns these domain names. I don't know what he's doing really. So it's uh, maybe. Uh, possibility for some of you for the next research. Uh, but uh, in case of we talk about domain names, this is just a live log you can see on the, my servers. I just filmed it, not to uh, demo it here, but if you, some of you want to real demo, you can come over after the presentation, I can show it to you. And um, it's quite uh, heavy, so sometimes you can see traffic going like that really fast, but it depends on time of the day and the domains we use. During experiment number two, from the last, uh, let's say, October till today, I collected 79 million requests on my uh, honeypots, which are running now on the Amazon. And I received about a half a million uh, unique IP addresses, which was accessing that. And um, user agents, it's also a big uh, thing, but I think I will go here a bit faster. So I, we don't see all, all the time user agents. So about 40% of user agents are just empty. So I cannot really predict even from what software, from what hardware this requesting, uh, request coming from. That can be IoT devices, it can be everything, self-driven uh, cars or whatever. So th we cannot tell, and this is a big, a big problem here. So we can see only about 60% of the traffic. We, we can identify this traffic as a traffic from some of the devices, even though this, this 60% not only from the domain names. As you can see from the previous slide, a lot of software on the software level making such requests as well, so independently of the operating system, which is really dangerous, I think. And um, uh, on this slide, just a quite of the statistics I collect, uh, collected also. This statistics just to summarize in this, uh, several versions of the software. And we can see that, for example, from uh, uh, different types of software, you see the, uh, still receiving the requests. And um, I think I cleaned from these statistics all the browsers. It's only software, which is not really the browsers. Um, I have another 10 minutes, so I will uh, pass some slides by because I have something to tell you uh, more about that. So you see in my experiment number two, I registered several new TLDs. And I believe, and I decided to submit my work on the black cat just because of the new TLDs, because this problem with WPET is quite known. And I told you that it's, on, on, it's known since uh, 2007, 2006 already. But new TLDs is coming. Nobody was re researching uh, in the scope of that. The problem is that the new TLDs allowing you to register also TL on the TLD level, the top, uh, uh, top domain level, the, the name. And um, uh, if you know your target, if you know the network where you would like to target, for example, if you know the network of the company and you know how the, what the top level DNS proxy they use. So basically you can predict what domain name you need to register and then you can attack people. For example, in, in case I gave you an example of trendnet.org, trendmicro. Uh, top level DNS suffix. In our case, in the case of Trendmicro, this domain name is already owned by the company, and wpad.trendnet.org is o owned uh, by the company domain name, so it's not not big deal. But in case of company use uh, some kind of name and a top level DNS suffix, uh, then you can really predict that and possibly attack. And I show you one example about that. So we know that uh, in Tokyo the games will happen in 2020. And I thought, okay, in case of I know that the game, games will be in Tokyo, so maybe I can go and try to uh, protect from the point of view of the uh, Japanese company was, where I was working, through micro Japanese company, to protect uh, games, uh, to buy in the special domain name, just to predict the domain name. So my, my idea was just to look for the domain name. I can buy and protect the games or, and then show it how it really works. So I decided, okay, I checked the several domain names. I thought that, okay, Tokyo domain name would be fine. So it's a new TLD, which was released a few months ago, I think, 
uh, maybe last last year, I'm not sure. So I just decided to go and check in case WPAD.Tokyo is not blocked maybe by government of Tokyo, I don't know, whatever. So I just seen it, it's open. I decided I have to buy it just to protect because in case of somebody else will own it and really can make use of it. So I bought this domain, uh, domain name and uh, I start receiving traffic immediately. So you can see this traffic here. So, um, and it's even more that all what I had from my other uh, domain names I registered for my experiment. So just one domain name brought me about um, 60 million requests just for how many months? Like six months. Yeah, exactly, yeah, till July. And uh, most of the requests was coming from the, just the several IP addresses. So you can take a look here. I, have on, I had only like th about th 200, 300 IP addresses unique. So for other domain names and experiments, it was my ha much higher rate. So I bought this uh, domain name and start uh, just observing what's happening. So of course I checked what's the top uh, requested IP address. And the IP address was like 61, 120, 205, 101. So, and I thought, okay, that's interesting because this one, just one IP address generate several um, um, uh, thousand requests per, per, per day first. And second, this domain name also, um, this IP address also uh, generate the traffic from the, with the different user agents. So for me, it's mean that it's just an exit point for some kind of big organization. And of course, when I uh, Google it a little bit more, so I found out this is the government of Tokyo. So basically, government of Tokyo, they have a, um, in top level, the NS suffix .tokyo as a, a part of the domain name. And a lot of, a lot of operating systems and the devices they use, they go in via just one exit point, they're trying to download my file. So I was really happy that I was able to protect government of Tokyo just to buy the domain name, so which was quite easy. From the other hand, if somebody else would buy it and then provide the proxy configuration for the government of Tokyo and then use it for me in the middle, that would be really dangerous. So there was, uh, I think, good catch from myself and I was really happy that we can do that and as a Japanese company we can protect the uh, government of Tokyo. That was really cool. Another thing we can talk about a bit about the hardware. So when we're talking about the top level DNS suffix, you can see uh, also different stuff here. And um, I sh I'm showing you uh, my pers personal thing. So I use at home in Germany a router called uh, Fritzbox from the company EVM. It's, this, is, this router is really popular in Germany. So most, uh, I think more than 60% of households use this router or routers from this company. Every router from this company provides top level DNS suffix which is looking like a uh, fritz.box. So in case of you uh, go to connect to the router and you go for example in your uh, Mac OS uh, device, you can see that the, your top level DNS suffix it's also called a search domain on, on the Linux and the Mac machines. You can see this fritz.box, it's a top level DNS suffix for you. Yeah, search domain uh, fritz.box. So basically in case of you can own the main name like fritz.box, you can attack. And uh, attack um, can happen in case of you can own the main name. But .box uh, TLD will go live I think end of this year. So what I did, I just go on, on the, some of the registrars and reserved this domain name like fritz.box just to be sure that nobody else can do that. Because of in case of somebody else can do that, you can attack more than 60% of households in Germany immediately just to providing them wpad.freeze.box information, uh, proxy information out of that. And um, I think it's also dangerous because it's just a one small example. A lot of routers using exactly the same idea. And in case of you see some other routers, for example, in through micro office we was using Wi-Fi router from Cisco and the top level DNS suffix was like some kind of CG, CGN 114. So basically in case of you can own such a TLD, you can attack all the routers like that. And um, uh, just to highlight and finalize my speech around that. So we, my aim here was just to submit into Black Hat to make aware that this problem is not uh, fixed and this problem is really dangerous in the scope of the new uh, TLDs because new TLDs really bring people possibility to register domain names. And I'm sure some of you now already going to GoDaddy or somewhere else and trying to uh, uh, register domain names like WPAT, I don't know, to uh, fun or WPAT, uh, to cool, .cool or whatever is uh, free now. So this is dangerous. This is really need to be solved somehow. 
And you can protect yourself, of course, if you, if you, in case of you're running inside your network some kind of machine with WPAT name, or you disable all these proxy settings. But at the end of the day, I collected a lot of information from the, uh, my honeypot where I was running a lot of apps using this, inf using this protocol independently from OS. And in case of you disable it in your operating system, your apps will still request this information just because of they would like to access the internet. And this is a big problem. Thank you so much.